Happy Friday, guys. It's noon. It's Ask Stephen Pope. Ask me any question about Amazon. Super excited to talk to you guys today. Got a lot of stuff going on in the Amazon world. We got Prime Day coming up here in a few days. Amazon's releasing all kinds of new PPC tools. You got day parting on the horizon. You've got new targeting functions that are coming out. So we'll dive into your questions here momentarily. But first, don't forget, if you haven't already, enroll in Mag School, mag-school.com. We have courses on lots of things. We are currently working on uh, a parentage course, how to launch on Amazon course. And then we also have this really cool one where we're going to put all of our infographics from every tip trick thing I've ever posted uh, as kind of a flavor to that. I made this new page this morning, myamazonguy.com slash PPC. And you can see like a bunch of our former PPC tips and videos all collected in one spot, a bunch of the PPC questions we get and AMAs. We've had Destiny Wish on, on. we've had Ad Badger and many, many other cool things. So feel free to check that out, myamazonguy.com slash PPC or go enroll in one of our mag school courses. All right, so let's dive into our questions today. Let's start with uh, Glenn with the super sticker. Thank you very much for that, Glenn. By what percentage has business gone down compared to last year as a consequence of this downturn? I think this is category dependent, Glenn. If you're selling uh, commodity staple items, your sales are probably up. But if you're selling scooters for kids, probably going to see a downturn on that for a variety of reasons. Uh, for example, uh, first of all, everybody bought their scooters when COVID hit because all the kids were at home. And then now they don't have money to buy a $100 scooter for kids so they can't afford them. So things like that could be a major uh, impact to certain categories. But by and large, I would say uh, the average downturn, somewhere between 15 and 20% year over year would be about right. Inflation rates are around 25% to 20%, somewhere in that range. I, I think it's inching closer to 25. Um, and that's, forget the government numbers. Uh, that's that's just the reality, right? Like gas prices, food prices, grocery, you name it. So so there's a lot of challenges. I'm very bullish on the Amazon platform and I'm biased to be bullish on the Amazon platform because I'm the Amazon guy. But I do think that there are many categories that you can still enter. We, we launched the, the Megapint uh, very successfully, made several thousand units in sales, right? So like if you just hit the right thing, um, you can do well. Certain categories are going to suffer though. So for those that don't know about the mega pint story, this is the one we launched with that, right? We even threw a, a pirate eye patch into it, which is kind of cool. And we got Amazon's choice and a bunch of different things, tumblers and water glass. That's a pretty big Amazon's choice badge to get. Uh, so we did a bunch of that. We, we launched Top Gun. That one didn't do as well. We've tried to launch like mama bear stuff. Looks like we got a, a lower star rating on that one, preventing that one from doing well, but it's custom. So a lot of cool things we've seen, um, but yeah, it's not easy right now. You gotta you gotta really put your dollars where they're gonna fight, right? Like uh, the number one skill an Amazon seller needs is what? True grit, right? Like you need actual grit, not MBAs. That's not what's gonna work here. Not some uh, suit or money, although money doesn't hurt. Uh, you need grit to do well on Amazon. So that's kind of the main focus point. All right, let's go to the next one. I've still not worked how to join. There's no join button. I'm on an iPad. Um, if you go to youtube.com slash my Amazon guy, the join button should be right there. You have to be logged into YouTube uh, for it to display, which I think you have to be logged into comment though. So that kind of leads me to believe it's there. But yeah, I don't know how to do that. But super stickers are great, Glenn. We appreciate it. Tian says, is it a good practice to open another seller account and let my wife sell the same products? If so, is it better for my wife to create new listings or just sell under my listing? Uh, I don't understand what your goal is by doing this. Are you trying to increase sales? If you're trying to increase sales, selling on the same listing does nothing for you. Absolutely nothing. Uh, in fact, it'll make it harder for you to grow sales because the buy box will be rotating back and forth. Then you got to double the accounting, double the logistics. I mean, it just gets a pretty big headache. If you're going to open up a second account, it's because normally it's because you want to launch a brand new brand that has different business partners and you want different people working on it. You need to 
separate the finances, the taxes and the logistics and just simplify all that stuff. But honestly, I know a lot of top 1000 Amazon sellers that just have giant accounts. They don't even they, they just put everything under one spot. They don't move things off to secondary accounts. So it's not not even necessary. But however, if you are going to sell one of your accounts or one of your brands at some point, it's way more convenient if you have an entirely different structures. So, but based on your question, I don't, I don't think you have any benefit to open up the second account unless your wife was going to make different products, not same products. Do not launch a second account to sell the same products. That's also prohibited, I believe, by TNC. Hey, Jeff, longtime listener. When you create a new variation, how long does it take for the reviews to merge? Under 24 hours. If they're not up in 24 hours, there's something preventing it. Some categories do not combine reviews anymore. Uh, if it takes longer than 24 hours, it's probably because uh, it's not going to connect. You can also tick it and ask Amazon to connect it, but you'll probably get an auto response on that, which won't be helpful. Um, but uh, Jeff, I can't remember which category you're in uh, that might have an issue. I'm not aware of it. Let's go to the next. David says, my sales dropped about 30% from the past week or so. Nothing changed in my end. This is the weakest. Um, July 4th weekend is the weakest week of the entire year. A lot of people don't realize that, but right around the July 4th holiday, everybody takes their vacation trips. Nobody's buying stuff. Nobody's going online. Um, so that's that's the reason. Um, I, don't, I don't honestly think, David, uh, you have anything to be concerned about. This is This is just the lull in the year. Um, not a specific issue, most likely. Having said that, I would do a couple of routine checks just to make sure. For those that don't know how to do this, this will be a good exercise for you. If you want to know how to do a hidden suppression check, what you do is you go to Amazon.com. has to be outside of the category tree where it says all. Type your ASIN in. If the ASIN comes up, great, no hidden suppression. If it doesn't come up, that's a hidden suppression and you need to fix the title or the main image. So I would definitely do some quick checks like that. Make sure uh, the ads aren't banned or anything like that. But honestly, David, last week was probably just the standard dip that everybody sees. Josh says, happy Friday, Stephen. We had a Proform X as our brand name for our first product. Later changed the name to Proform X Innovation Reimagined. Brand name changes are not very fun. 15 of our first ASINs now say Revenge Golf Carts, Parts, and Accessories, our competitor, as the brand and the manufacturer, and the listings are linked to their brand store. Is this a listing hijack? 50% chance this is a listing hijack, Josh. 50% chance it's just Amazon's dump catalog. Uh, do If you don't have brand registry for the original brand, this leads to situations like this. I would check to see if that competitor is Chinese. If they're Chinese, I'm going to say 100% chance hi listing hijack. If it's not Chinese, it's a U.S. base, I'm going to say 50-50. And it's probably not intentional, most likely. Uh, but the way that you get this back is by showing the history, of how the account, how the listings were on your account originally. You need to file trademarks with brand registry. You need to clean that up. You need to have your brands associated to your brand registry uh, and have all that in control. If you're not doing that, it leads to situations like this. Um, these situations are not as common anymore because brand registry has been such a good deterrent and protection against listing hijacks. Still happens, but not as frequently. I think the last time I had to deal with a major one based on your description was about two and a half, three years ago. That's how that's how rare they are now. Um, but it sounds like to me you got you, you got a trademark brand registry issue. You need to file all kinds of tickets. You need to grab your your your. Uh, case IDs and track those. You need to send emails to Jeff at Amazon. You just got to escalate this until it gets resolved. Multiple phone calls, template file uploads, whole nine yards is in your future. Biggest problem you have now, Josh, is that the brand note ID has been set for your competitor. So it's, this is going to be extremely difficult to get unsettled, unfortunately. A lot of, lot of pain in your future, Josh. Sarah says, hi, Stephen, what do you recommend to check on daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly based on PPC campaigns and accounts in general? Um, I don't think I'd ever come up with a yearly thing to do. Maybe like an outside audit would be yearly. Uh, but in terms of, of some of the things you can do, I think that new website that I mentioned in my intro, myamazonguide.com slash PPC has a lot of great tips in here. So let's go check that out together. So for example, 
do you have everything segmented in the account? Are you focused on tacos versus ACOS? Are you, are you, do you have any test campaigns up? Do you have advertising active on every single product? Are, are your bids, um, when you lower them, actually lowering the ACOS? That doesn't always happen, right? Do you have broad match campaigns up? These are things that you should check out and think about. There's all kinds of variables of things. Um, we probably should create like a, uh, a quarterly graphic. That's a, probably a pretty good idea. Geraldine, why don't we take a note on that? Um, I thought I had another. Okay, yeah, I guess this one is it. So, so like here's some specific tips. Like auto campaigns, always always be running them. So if you don't have auto campaigns up, make sure you get those. Add weekly negations. There's a weekly tactic for you. Discover new keywords. I'd say that's about weekly as well. Uh, increasingly, you need to have video ads. So maybe do like an ad check to see like which ad types you don't have up. And we see a lot of video becoming a big thing. Display, I'm a little soft on right now, uh, but the retargeting component, pretty heavy, I would say. Um, so, yes, some ideas there for you, Sarah. MyAmazonGuy.com slash PPC. Check some of that out. But I'm going to I'm gonna take an action item to make a more formal answer to your question because I think it was a good one. Glenn says, do you know anything about the ERP requirements in Germany and France to do with packaging recycling? EPR. All right. So let's Google that. EPR Germany. Let's see what we get. Extended producer responsibility. Come compliant. I see a March 30th deadline. So I don't know anything about this. Let's go check it out real quick. Anybody in Europe will be curious. Uh, so you have to get some compliance. Jeez Louise, Europe is always making so many rules. So it's an environment policy. I, I, I saw the other day on the news, there was like a bunch of farmers. I want to say it was in like some Dutch farmers, maybe. Uh, that were like protesting with their tractors and they, they like they literally couldn't do business under the new guidelines. So producer charge for marketplace sellers. Yeah, I mean, it's, it looks like to me it's you got to register and you have to update your packaging um, to do with packaging recycling. So I don't I don't know anything further than that. But, you know, uh, you, as you can see, I looked at that ERP hyphen info dot com. I would check that out, Glenn. Um, but yeah, Europe is increasingly mandating all kinds of things, making it harder to do business. Not a, not a fun one. Jeff says, how much of a price increase percentage will trigger Amazon to cha charge you more for PPC or affect organic results or how many standard deviations you are away from the median price in your category? This is a fantastic question. Very difficult one to answer. The other thing I would add to this too is that uh, buy box percentage, right? So like, let's say you increase your price um, from $20 to $40, you might actually lose your buy box. Um, we had an issue a couple of years ago with price gouging, uh, you know, when there was the big runs on toilet paper and other things that was, that was, you know, those were fun times. We survived the toilet paper shortage in the United States here. Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, there's that, but in terms of, uh, price percentage increase to charge more for PPC, I don't think there's any data or conclusive evidence on this question. So I don't know how to answer that one, but I would say you're onto something, uh, but affecting organic search, that's pretty immediate. If you increase your prices 30%, you will absolutely see organic results dip almost immediately. Amazon does have a major factor on, on price compared to the category. But once you start getting those sales, if your conversion rate maintains, you might regain them. So I would say you'll see slough off and then it might come back. That could be a very big component. Um, but I don't, I don't know if I have a mathematical answer to you. I might, you know, I've got the black swan book up behind me here on my bookshelf. Um, and, and standard deviation calculations, definitely something worth looking into, but I don't think there's any math assessment on this. It's more of like test and see what happens. Um, and, and, and the best piece of advice I would give on this question is whenever you're doing price increases, do them gradually, regardless of all other scenarios, because if you do them too fast, not only will you lose buy box, not only will you lose a lot of these different components, there could be a lot of challenges. Uh, slam that like button for me, guys. Add comments today if you want to help me out, get the channel going. We had a, we had 500,000 hours of content digested last month. Pretty amazing number if you think about it. 
500,000 hours of content watched on our YouTube channel last month. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, we got another donation coming in from Zeke. Why don't we jump him on the line here? Zeke, thanks for the donation there. Uh, wrote three questions today. You're very welcome. We'll get to those. We also got Michael with a super sticker here. Um, so let's jump to Michael and then we'll do Zeke. So let's see if we can find Michael's and I found Zeke's first, but cue, cue both those up. Zeke says, and regarding selling math flashcards, I checked the PPC bid for this keyword and it was over $4 seems too high for not too many sellers. I wonder if it's diff a different under a different account, you get different bids. Um, I think the suggested bid is not different per account. I think that's a generic thing. Um, I would say that there's probably a reason why the bid is higher in this category, Zeke. It could be that people are not making the money on the flashcards. It could be that they're making money on the courses. It could be that they're making money on the upsells, the subscriptions. Maybe there's some branding for a school, those kinds of things. Um, that would be my, my top guess. But I don't think you're going to see different bid suggestions per account. I think it'll be the same. Found another one from Zeke here. Since we're in a recession, should I look for new products to sell or wait and see where we're heading? Um, this is a this is a financial question more than it is a business question, right? So in times of recessions, cough depressions, uh, it's it's an opportunity, right? So like the strong business owners that have strong cash positions are going to be able to do whatever they want. They're going to be able to buy their um, buy out their competitors at lower costs. They're going to be able to maintain their position and grow in the sector faster. So if you have a strong financial position today, recessions are great news for you. But if you have a weaker position, it becomes more problematic because, for example, if inflation is as high as I claim it to be, and it freaking is, uh, then you buying a year supply of inventory, best financial decision of the year you can make. Why? Because it's like buying it on discount. You don't have to... Uh, you know, worry about restocking this in six and 12 months when the Chinese raise the rates because there's a trade war, right? Like, like those are things, those are uh, peace of mind you can sleep at night with, something to keep in mind. At the same time, if you have less than $50,000 in cash flow for your business, it's pretty hard to justify uh, investing in a downturn, right? So it just, this is a really dependent question on, on what your cash flow looks like, the finance question. Um, and positioning, but but it's it's absolutely a great time to launch products, believe it or not. But you do need to be more selective. Would I launch a luxury cosmetic uh, blush right now? No, that would not be where I would go. Would I launch a commodity staple item that everybody's going to use? Absolutely. Would I choose the twenty dollar gift item versus the fifty dollar gift item? Absolutely. I would make very different business product selections. Uh, with that in mind. Sorry to hear about the Mother's Day gift box. What are the lessons you learned for not to do for the next product? Uh, well, I, I mean, I wrote a really good wave year one, $144,000 in sales in 30 days. And then it just pretty much died out. Next year, I did 65K in that four week span uh, for perspective. And for those that aren't familiar with the mom box story, this is the mom box right here. It did really well. Try to sell it for 50 bucks. We're in the off season now. It's not doing too hot. Um, I'm overstocked. We did, we did great, right? Like I, I've like lowered my fabulous box down to $30 because we're having a really hard time getting some of these products to sell and move. Uh, and it's, it's just because high, high ticket gift items right now are just like the last thing on somebody's shopping list. That's, that's the real reason. I don't think I did anything wrong. I don't think we made any wrong decisions. Just timing sucked. That's just bottom line. Sometimes that happens. Um, but I would say, uh, I probably would have been better off getting into a new sector versus launching another variation, which is the number one mistake I think successful sellers make is by launching variations instead of launching new products. So I think that's a good lesson. Michael says, hey, Stephen, thanks for the amazing content. I will see you next week in West Palm Beach. I'll be at the Pow Wow event, guys. If we have a product that has multiple sizes and colors, would it make sense to create a campaign together? Uh, generally, it's inconsequential on this question. Um, in general, regardless of variation tree standardization, you want to segment the ad campaigns as much as possible, make new campaigns, and separate the products at the campaign level. That's the best practice. 
The reason why it doesn't apply as much to a sizing or a color question is because for the most part, the keywords are identical. Uh, and, and, and really what I would say, Michael, is I would, I would probably have a two campaign structure, one campaign with 80% of your budget to put to a single SKU and really try and push that one SKU. Um, usually the lowest cost option or whatever you have the most stock of. Um, but basically the BSR is, is shared on most child ASINs on a product parentage in most categories. Therefore, if it's shared, you want to have one SKU be the highest and put all of your uh, your sales behind it and all ships will rise together if you do it that way. That's the why. Um, so, But with like clothing sizes, small, medium, large, this becomes really hard to rank the product effectively on the BSR. And so it just becomes a really troublesome activity, which is why you want to have a single SKU dominate whenever possible. So like go for, I think the most commonly sized you know, thing that somebody buys right now in the U.S. is a large size. Um, we're all fat in America. And and so uh, that's why you have to focus on that. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. Let me know how that goes for you. Uh, but yeah, West Palm Beach powwow events uh, next week. I'm going to be um, frontlining first guy on stage uh, next week, flying in from Atlanta. I live in the Atlanta area. I'll be down in Florida. So look forward to seeing all of you guys there that join us for the powwow event. Still can get tickets if you need. Farhan says, how much should CPCs be for a defensive sponsor display campaign targeting your own ASINs? As low as possible. Yes, uh, defensive targeting, you can get away with the lower bids. Um, and uh, you should be able to get a discount from Amazon as well because you're going to convert better. So there's some benefits there as well. But by and large, uh, not necessarily a lot of budget is going to be behind these campaigns in particular. Uh, do I do sponsor display defense on my own products today? I do not. Um, so I would say this is an advanced recommendation. Um, and, and generally, display is good for top of the funnel awareness. It doesn't do as well. Um, a cost will be super high. But a, but a defensive uh, campaign strategy, if you've done defensive sponsored products, and then you do de defensive uh, display campaigns where you're targeting your own products. This is a way to prevent somebody from stealing your turf. You're not going to acquire new customers, but you're going to maintain your market share, right? So I love talking about market share. Who here has watched my video on the ICAP marketing funnel where I talk about impressions, add to carts, clicks, and purchases? I, I did it out of order. We use the search query performance report over here, right? And you can track all of your market shares. So like Farhan's like, hey, I want to increase my market share. And so he's going to defend his, his territory, right? So let's say, um, you know, you're targeting your brand name, you can target um, non-branded keywords, right? So check this out. I've got 5% of the impression share on this, 17% of the clicks, and almost 20% of the purchases, a little over 18% at this very moment last week. Um, it kind of fluctuates. So this is a keyword that I use to show like how things went over time. Here is the actual uh, week in and week out when we focused on this. So over the course of seven weeks, here's the results. I went from 2.75 to 7.5. We, our numbers are softer on that latest screen I showed you than this. Uh, but in seven weeks, we went from boom, uh, A to B here. Lots of good performance improvements. Impressions, clicks, add to carts, purchases. If you have not watched the ICAP marketing funnel, be sure to check that one out because being able to increase your market share, big, big deal, highly recommend it. It's probably one of the smartest things I've come up with this year. Uh, really, really like it. Uh, by the way, if you guys think there's clever sayings I've made or things you really like that I've come up with, like the golden ratio, one SEO, um, one PPC keywords, every two organic keywords to be able to keep your ratio in the golden zone or other things like that, let me know what you like. Uh, sometimes I'm testing out branding and wondering like, what crazy things should I keep spending more time saying? Sometimes I wonder. Um, but yeah, so not, I keep your bids as low as possible. When I target competitor ASINs, either keyword or product targeting, the CPCs are extremely high, over $3 sometimes, over five. Any recommendations on reducing CPCs? Yes, get an exact match of the keyword and the title of the product whenever possible. If it's super high, uh, focus the photography to increase your conversion rate for the keyword. So, for example, on my Sage Candles for Cleansing House keyword, uh, I have hiccups all of a sudden. I apologize. 
And we put this into the title. We improved our conversion rate. We put it into the listing, all of those good things. Looks like best postpartum gifts. This is new on my search career performance report. Hadn't seen that before. But notice how I have a pyramid where I've got less brand share on impressions than I have on clicks. Normally, you want to see a tornado where it's you know bigger in the funnel up top, gets smaller as you go down the ICAP marketing funnel. So I've got a pyramid here where I have an opportunity, right? It's like I have 6% of the clicks on a keyword. So there's an opportunity. This is why you like go back and review this. Um, so what I would do, Farhan, is I would look at your keywords that have the high bids. Go look at your search query performance report, kind of mesh the data together and see if this is something you really should focus on, right? Like sometimes you have to target and pick your niche and figure out like where you're going to make your stand. Uh, and other times you have to let some things go, right? Uh, so can you make a profit on those keywords? Are they are they so important to your brand that you are going to lose everything, um, lose all your momentum, lose your rankings, all of those other challenges? If so, you probably have to maintain them. Um, and you don't have a lot of control of, of lowering your CPCs other than you just coming in with a low bid and saying, OK, I'm not going to get very much impressions, but I'm going to put in $1.50 and I'll take the leftovers. Sometimes that works. Sometimes that's OK. But your impression count is going to be super low. Sarah says, what is your recommended keyword bidding optimization and strategy? I'm actually been thinking a lot about this the last 24 hours because I'm going to make a video on, on like my full optimization guide. But basically, um, Sarah, you, you, when, when you're doing uh, PPC setups, you're, you're making a deductive guess. You are guessing whether your campaign as structured as you build it and segmented will perform well. Therefore, the nice thing about deduction is that you learn from mistakes. So if you have a campaign that doesn't do well, you're going to know very fast. You're going to be able to understand it very quickly and be able to make micro adjustments. So my strategy is measure one time and cut 500 times, right? And so a lot of people are like, I'm going to measure twice and cut once. That's not going to work for PPC management and bid optimization. It is you make a guess and then you literally make micro adjustments left and right. Now, don't make too many adjustments or otherwise you can't track it and measure it effectively, right? Shouldn't be doing PPC adjustments any more than every 48 hours. However, the new API that they just released, Perpetua and a couple other tools have got some ins for the tool uh, to do day parting. Um, you can make micro adjustments down to the hour level. So there, there is a lot more data available. Um, and I think that the PPC bidding optimization um, strategies are going to shift quite a bit over the next six to 12 months. Jury's out so far. I always like to um, do some micro testing before I go all in on a new strategy. You got to see what happens. Like when, when Amazon came out with display ads, for example, on Amazon, it was super bad, didn't do well. Some of the new targeting methodologies aren't worth doing yet, right? Like there's a bunch of new things that have come out that are not good, right? Amazon launched for every 10 programs that Amazon launches, like one is good, right? One. So just keep that in mind. But other than that, I would say uh, micro adjustments is probably my best answer to this question. Um, I would I would also go for position three and four on most keywords, where you're getting maximum exposure at minimal price, just to maximize your dollar and make it go as far as possible. Is there a way we can collect and use without breaking TOS customer contact details so I can market to them directly? Technically, there is no way to do this without violating TOS. Does it break TOS to market to my Amazon customers directly? You have a way to email your Amazon customers within Seller Central now, anybody that follows your brand. That is okay. Um, obviously, you have to have followers to do that. That's a challenge by itself. But um, a lot of Landing Cube and other third-party tools and rebates have gone out of their way to try and market customers directly, and, and they're all violations of TOC, um, TOS, rather, unfortunately. Uh, you're going to get in trouble. You're going to get burned if you do it. So I would say don't. Just build a community, add value, um, you know, write articles and content that your particular niche and brand is very fond of, answer their questions, add continuous value. 
that's the way that you're going to be able to market to those customers is showing your product in use, hiring influencers, trying to get your customers to take pictures of your product and load it to Instagram. Those are valid strategies that I think are risk free. If you market your own lists from Amazon, at some point you're going to get shut down. Can you do it without getting caught? Absolutely. But there's no way to do this without violating TOS. Good idea with the eye patch with your mug. Thanks, Glenn. Appreciate it. The thinker ish. My stuff is coming by boat as SPD, small parcel delivery. I've been sent the UPS tracking numbers when I input the UPS tracking numbers under the shipment summary in Seller Central. Guessing there's a part two here where they probably disappear or don't show up. The system does not accept the information. So uh, maybe um, maybe the person that generated the UPS tracking didn't didn't like publish it. That could be one component here. Since it's coming from overseas, this is extraordinarily common. Um, I don't think this is something you need to worry about. They'll check in just fine to Amazon. Um, but but yes, I know what you're talking about. I've seen this bug before. All right, we got a part three here. Uh, in continue, oh, I think you you went to part three and then went to Zeke. I don't know if you need to go back here. Zeke says, in continue to last week, search math flashcards and tell me what you think about the $2 product Amazon is selling. I thought the court demanded them to stop selling product on their own platform. Um, court court said Amazon's, a mon well, I don't actually, don't remember if they actually explicitly said Amazon's a monopoly, but they did say there's some unfair practices that are being done. Um, they did not bar them from selling their own products. However, that's, that's not my understanding of it. Um, I mean, Amazon is going to cheat whether they admit it or not. They cheat. Uh, I do bite the hand that feeds me. Uh, and, and, and they have some bad actors. This is, this is true of all powerful companies. Uh, I don't think there's a lot you can do about it. I, Zeke, I know you're really attached to these math, math flashcards, but like, I don't, I don't think I've ever met anybody that makes money on flashcards, to be honest. I, I think it's an upsell opportunity. Thinkerish says, I thought the freight forwarder is supposed to get the BOL bill lading from the boat once the products are received. So there, <laughs> there, there is a long chain of events that happens with the supply chain and sourcing and whatnot. When you send like a pallet, the bill of lading um, is generated right before Amazon and comes and picks it up. With overseas, it's a little bit different, different process um, once you get the freight on board. But, but Thinkers, I, I, I think tracking numbers coming from overseas, getting into the Amazon system is something that really there's no perfect solution here. I, I really wouldn't worry about it. All right, we got a part four. All right. What is the proper way of inputting this information? First launch would really like for everything to go smooth. Um, there, there isn't. Just, just let it check in on its own. As long as the labels have been put onto the boxes, you're good to go. There's a many new ASINs that have taken the category ranks in my category. However, they do not fit the category descriptions. As results, bump my ASINs down in rank. How can I re-rank? Um, you could file tickets suggesting Amazon adjust the categories on the other products. Um, there's suggestions. They don't necessarily go through. Could be that Amazon's doing the ranking automatically and the categorization automatically. You could also choose to switch your own category to fit something and try and go win somewhere else. Probably not ideal. A lot of people do it though, um, but but yeah, this this is probably an uphill battle, probably not winnable to be honest. Karen, good to see you. Hey Steve, for your Mega Pint tumbler, is the design on the one side or is it double sided? It's one sided on my side. Uh, also, any consequences for having wine and beer in the product title? None at all. If you say drinking though on the product, that gets you in trouble for whatever reason. So uh, don't say drinking. <laughs> Sarah, do you optimize search term bidding the same as keywords? So, yes, yes, I think the answer uh, to that question. So, you can have different strategies um, for different keywords, right? Like you can have your PPC keywords and your search engine optimization keywords and focus on them very, very differently. Uh, you have phrase match, broad match, the query that the consumer is using that shows up in the search term, which is in the in the PPC, right? So like if you have a broad match for wine tumbler and then somebody types in 
wine tumbler for married couples or for weddings or whatever. That is the search term. But the keyword that you selected was wine tumbler. Therefore, if you have a product that does well for weddings, you may want to add it as a keyword instead of just picking it up as a search term uh, on a broad match keyword. That's how you would think about this sort of thing. I think I think that's the question you're asking, but I'm not 100% on, on, on identifying that. So if you have a follow-up, Sarah, feel free to add it. What happens if my stuff arrives at Amazon without the tracking numbers? Uh, they'll, they'll check it in just fine. As long as the original um, pallet labels, box labels are on the boxes, it'll check in just fine. David says, does it hurt your account when Amazon bans your ads? Not the account, but the product suffers a lot. Uh, my my product for, so I'm not social distancing. I'm drinking alone. Uh, I said it backwards, but you get the idea. I'll pull it up on screen here. Um, this product got banned from ads. My account's fine. Never had a problem with the account. Never been suspended. Never been banned. Never had any big problems. Uh, but this particular product has suffered ever since. It got banned from ads and has never recovered, never will. And obviously it's... Uh, uh, well past its day and age, right? Like we're on to bigger and better things. We're coming, we actually just bought a new printer. We're going to be printing in color now and doing a bunch of things ourselves. So super excited about some of the things we've got going on. Um, but yeah, you, you got to keep up with the trends and switch to the next products. If your product gets banned from ads and it's not just because it's an accidental marked as adults, it's almost impossible to get a product on band from band ads. So that's a big challenge. Frost Hack says, I see MAG expanding its market services to Facebook. Which advertising channels do you think will have the biggest impact on sales in the coming years? I think Facebook and Google ads are, are going to be um, winners 24-7. I think TikTok's the most up and coming. Hardest to do. You need influencers. You need video content, stuff like that. It's hard to execute on those platforms. Um, if TikTok was going to do really, really well, YouTube would have done well already. Uh and, and I think that in e-commerce, YouTube ads don't do too hot in comparison. Um, but we see video just really making some big headwinds uh, of late. So all bets are off. We'll see what happens. I don't think Pinterest is ever going to come online. I, I think that Twitter is a dead platform. Um, and many of the other things that have kind of come and gone, they're, they're becoming the MySpaces of the world, if you will. Uh, but yes, we're expanding our services. We're, uh, we, we, we sell Facebook ads. So if you're interested in that, check us out. Some of my FBA returns are customer damaged, broken use. Why does Amazon issue full refunds? I wish I knew the answer to this question, but I will tell you this. If a customer damages your stuff, it's not on Amazon. Unfortunately, Amazon does not reimburse you for customer damages. Uh, it's, a, it's an unfortunate thing. Uh, it's not a fair system at all, but it's also why Amazon has the strongest uh, consumer conversion rate on online, bottom line. So you got to take take your punches with you. Um, it's a fact of the marketplace. Hey, Kim, I can't understand the motive for a seller to do this. A trademark FBA brand registered product of mine. Another seller shows up on my B2B listing, no permission, says shipped by Amazon. They... Charge $5.99 for shipping on a $20 product. When I pull up uh, Helium 10 X-ray, it shows my brand, even when it sells by the seller. Seller, any ideas just to make the shipping fee they are charging? So this one, I have to really think about how to answer this. So I understand you have a hijacker or somebody, at least an unauthorized seller is probably the better term in this particular case. And they only sell on the B2B side, not the B2C. So they're which is unusual by itself. Um, they're trying to make money. That's the why. But but are they are they infringing on your trademark? I, Kim, if I were you, I would do a test buy and then see if they're selling your product. And then I would file a trademark infringement and take them down. I think that's probably the action item on this particular question. But why would they show up? You know, Check their account out. See like how many products are on their account. If they have thousands of products, it, this is probably a strategy that you they're they're using at large. That would be my best guess. Hey Eli, how to best see reports on how products are performing? Um, so depends on what you're looking for. If you just want to do unit counts, you can grab your cell phone, look at the ACE and business reports inside of Seller Central. If you want profits, you need to use a third party tool for that. Um, I, I use Helium Ten. 
Um, that's that's my preference. Um, just fun fact, guys. Uh, Helium 10 um, is searched 96,000 times on YouTube each month. Jungle Scout, only 45,000 times. So there are some advantages of using a, a tool like that. They have a lot of robust tools. Um, you guys can get 50% off Helium 10 if you use my Amazon guy 50. Um, and you can check out some of the reasons why we like Helium 10 by going to myamazonguy.com slash H10. So check that out. I sell a product with a free accessory or and a customer returns the product without the free accessory. Will Amazon still issue the refund and simply classify the return as customer damaged? Yes, that's exactly what's going to happen. Sucks. Notice that some listings are ranked in multiple BSR. Uh, going back to the last question, another idea for you. Uh, you can also try and package your stuff really well so that it's very obvious to Amazon not to check it back into the um, the bin. So that way you don't have somebody getting another order without the accessory. Uh, that can be, you know, it really sucks if that happens. I also had a, um, a long time uh, fan email me yesterday that they have a Chinese product selling a plastic version of their metal product. And, and then the customers would buy both and then return the plastic to the metal listing. Just total scumbag stuff. We're seeing that all the time, unfortunately. Um, so just try and make sure that your packaging, uh, if open, won't get it returned. And, and do file safety claims when, when stuff happens, for sure. Uh, Glenn says, did actual live video ever become a thing? I know Amazon was publishing this about two years ago. Something like QVC for your own product on Amazon. Yes. I believe it's at amazon.com slash live. Why don't I get to take a whirl over here? So you can go over here. Here's like the QVC angle, people talking about their products. You know, this guy's got 800 viewers right now talking about whatever. Um, you got massage guns here. You got barbecue stuff, best in home, a bunch of other things that are coming up. And you can see like all the different channels. So, yes, it's a thing. The question is, you know, how much of a thing? I mean, you can look at the numbers yourself. 800 viewers there. Let's click on a random one here. Eight viewers there. And that was first on the row. Right. So. There may not be a lot of hits available. This person's got 57 views. So, you know, I'd say it's a thing, but, uh, you know, it's not necessarily going to move the needle completely. I would say there's some other benefits. It shows up on your listing um, as well, which is kind of nice. Extra defense there. Notice that some listings are ranked in multiple BSR subcategories. How can I do this? Are there benefits? Uh, generally, this is not something that you can um, do by template uploader yourself. You have to ask somebody at Amazon to do it. Um, and most of the time, they're just going to say no. So you would file a ticket and then do a phone call and explain why it needs to be in both. But generally, this is pretty rare. I don't see this very often. I don't know if it's actually helpful either, to be honest. Sarah says, you always said you said always let the auto campaigns run. That's correct. How much if, it, if it's not profitable for the past 90 days? Lower the bid until it is. Make sure you add negations. That's the most important component. Um, the negations are the key to a successful auto campaign. Michael says, what's the difference between a default bid and specific keyword bid? Many times keywords bid are less than the default bid. So, so the default is uh, what, what your campaign defaults to if you don't enter a bid. The suggested bid is what Amazon's saying, hey, based on um, all the bids that we see, if you want to show up, you need to bid at least this. Um, there is some bias in that methodology, but it does work. And then if you bid slightly above suggested bid, you're going to be almost guaranteed to get imp impressions, right? And then you can lower your bid down later if the ACOS isn't good. That's how I would treat it. But those are the differences. Good question. Um, by the way, Geraldine, we should do a we should do a graphic on that last question. It's a good one. Karen says, cash flow service I use sees spending pending Amazon payouts and makes that payout readily available for me now. Of course, it charges a fee, which adds up over time, but the cash flow benefit is huge. Um, hmm. Yeah, okay. So basically, there's a bunch of uh, services out there that you can use to get cash faster because Amazon's holding like a two-week, three-week balance. They'll hold it for two weeks and then they'll pay it out in a week, kind of like payroll. So it stinks on cash flow. You don't have access to it. So you can use a third-party service. I'm not a fan of I, I like my 3% margin, though. So I, I don't use it. Can you speak on these cash advanced services versus having Amazon pay us in their long, drawn-out interview? Yeah. 
I, I understand that cash flow is an issue. Uh, I would bake it into the system um, and, and I would not try and hurt. A th it's not worth a 3% margin to get your money two weeks faster. It's just not worth it, in my opinion. Since your Megapite Tumblr is such a niche item, how did you do keyword research? I didn't. Uh, we just made the product and showed up. Um, and then after a week of data, we adjusted it. That's that's kind of how that particular product went. Uh, there were no other Johnny Depp tumblers. There was other Johnny Depp keywords and data and pirate stuff and Pirates of the Caribbean. But honestly, we just we just hit a very nice uh, big win when when they showed up when that trial happened. What's your way to keep track of changes you made across the account? I don't. I don't track changes. I just I just make good I just make good changes. Now tracking is important. Annotation a good idea. Um, for our clients, we use Asana in project management. Um, we also use a lot of Google Sheets and we'll annotate when we do changes. Uh, PPC, we keep an export of all the PPC changes. We back up the file so if changes don't work. Um, PPC changes are also automatically tracked inside of the portal. That's another benefit. And then you can back up uh, PPC to a former load as well. There's a Chinese competitor that sells products in my niche. They dominate all of our search result placement types, driving up my CPCs. What's the best way to combat a large budget competitor? Make a high quality product that consumers are willing to pay more for. That's that is the <laughs> that's the unfortunate answer. Uh, you cannot win on price, and you're not going to out budget somebody in the chi in the Chinese community. Michael says, I've noticed some sellers use an add-on accessory and are able to link the listing to their branded storefront, but the main product isn't branded. Is it against TOS? Uh, not against TOS to make kits. Uh, mommyincome.com, big um, Christian Orslander over there does a lot of that stuff. You can check check out how she does it and how she recommends kits. Very common strategy, not against TOS. Jessica says, one of my ASINs has been wrongly flagged as a toy. Now I'm being asked to submit toy compliance documents. Try to appeal. Flat, shield, am, a, flat sheet Amazon game, but they denied it. Um, so, so Jessica, uh, you're going to need to file um, brand registry tickets, change the categorization, and fight this left and right. You're going to need to talk to somebody. You're going to need to escalate it. Um, this is not going to be an easy one for you to fight. I'd say like an 8.5 on the, on the 1 to 10 scale. Uh, probably going to take you six weeks to resolve this issue most likely. Hi, Steven. Good idea to implement AIDA, Attention, Interest, Desire, Action, Advertising Model, and A-plus content, or the whole listing? Is it allowed to use persuasive co copy in the listing? Um, I don't think people read copy. I really don't. I would do everything in the images that you possibly can to showcase the product. Big, big text in the images, not heavy amounts of written copy to be read. Put everything for keyword stuffing into the listing that you possibly can. The copy is for robots. Um, so no. How can I reach TOS uh, on PPC, top of search, and show as less as possible on product pages? This is when you would put in a lower bid, but do a top of search bid modifier. PPC is 95% on product pages. The CTR is 0.1%. My top of search is only 5% of impressions, but has two to 3% CTR, any tips? Well, first of all, the CTR on the product pages is going to be lower and is not a problem. That is not going to affect your organic. That's not going to affect your cost, not going to be a problem at all. So don't worry about that. If you do want top of search to show more, you need a higher bid. You need a bid modifier. Easy answer on this one. Jordan Lee says, do you suggest running promotions, coupons for Prime Day and video ad campaigns and budget dependent? Um, it depends on how much stock position you have. Hyperinflation means you're going to be raising your prices. So generally speaking, running promotions, discount sales and strike throughs, not a good idea right now. I think that you could just ignore Prime Day and be fine as a business, truthfully. I think it's a lot of hoopla. I think that this is the weakest time of the year. You will see a sales spike even if you do nothing. Sohel says, Stephen, how are you? Facebook question today. Is it possible that we can change the listing title, back end search terms, bolts, description without brand registry? Yes, but if you're not the seller of record, the creator of the listing, it's harder because there's multiple seller contributions. So, very difficult. You have to ticket it. Won't go through automatically. 
Get your brand registry though. Best advice I'm going to give you. Buy that trademark from my Amazon guy. We'll help you out. I have 45 products with a year of sales history planning to revamp my entire PPC strategy on an 80-20 principle, i.e. Crete campaigns with only 20% keywords that brought me 80% of sales. Part one of three. I'm planning to create exact match campaigns for all of my keywords that have one campaign and only contain one keyword. So one ad group containing one keyword. And I plan to create broad and phrase match campaigns with the search terms that are not part of the exact match campaigns. I will put all keywords I put in the exact campaigns as negative in negative exact in broad and phrase match campaigns. So um, I would not negate the good keywords on the broad campaigns. You, you might actually get a lower a cost on those search terms inside of the broad match. I've seen it all the time. So that's the first thing I'd say, don't do that. I have 45 products with a year of sales history planning to revamp my entire PPC strategy based on the 80, 20 principle. Um, I would not delete or pause your old campaigns before you test this out. Your old campaigns have a lot of history and you don't want to um, just cold turkey those. So leave those on, set up new campaigns for your new structure, give those two to six weeks, see how it goes. If they outperform the old, then pull the old back. But my prediction is the older a campaign is, the more likely it's going to be sustainable and maintain itself at the A cost you're seeking if it has previously been close to it. All right, rest of the question here. Create campaigns only from 20%. Go back. Um, all right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. So one keyword then then plan to create broad and go back to the part three. Four. One more. <laughs> All right, let's. We got. We got to move. We got. We got lots of questions in queue here. Let's keep going. Uh, how placement competition and the auction process work? So uh, you put in a dollar bid. I put in a dollar oh one. In theory, I could pay up to a dollar oh one to win the majority of the impressions. You will pay that dollar if somebody else is, is uh, bidding 99 cents and you'll get position two and I'll get position one. That's kind of generally how an auction house works. It goes position by position down the tree until all of the positions are filled. However, it's not exact. They do have some variables that go up and down, back and forth, dependingly on um, conversion, CTR and other factors that Amazon doesn't release. But those are some pretty good indications. Why can the same keyword have a lower CPC in the broader phrase than exact? This is because Amazon is discounting it. Also, more people are bidding higher on the exact match. Uh, weird how that works. Om says, so I'd like to ask you if my strategy mentioned in part one or three above is good. So I, I gave you my best answer on this. Test it out and find out. Um, I don't think it's going to outperform your past campaign structure for at least six weeks. That's my guess. Um, Heine says, coming over from LinkedIn, tried to add keywords in bullets and titles and A-plus and search term slot, ran PPC aggressively on it. Not sure if there's a follow-up question here. Who are the other PPC experts you recommend following on YouTube besides your channel? Um, so I think Adam Heist does some really good master classes. I like, I like some of his stuff. Um, the the, the um, Ad Badger has the best podcast, hands down. Destiny Wishon does the best Q&A um, and is a very big proponent. She's from Better AMS. We've had a, a other guests coming in from various different um, PPC agencies as well. You can find a lot of them. If you go on my channel and just type in PPC AMA, you're going to see some of the guys that we like to work with. There's some really great content. Um, you can check those out as well. Sergio says, hello, is Mag able to provide product photos and copyright text? We don't currently uh, shoot photography or touch products. We're a completely digital shop. We absolutely can do Photoshop, graphic editing, copywriting text for new products all day long. What's the cost? We we have some a la carte services to do like a full A-plus content for a thousand bucks on the website. Uh, full service engagements, we custom quote those. Anybody that wants to get, um, so Sergio, I'd recommend you talk to my sales team. Um, if anybody wants to book a call with our sales team, you can go to myamazonguy.com slash book and talk to our sales team about how we can serve you and add value to your account. We'll do everything we can uh, to do that for you. 
All right, so I've got time today is a little bit limited, so we're only going to do three more questions today. Uh, let's let's see it. Adil said, oh, by the way, guys, uh, that reminds me. Uh, his name reminded me because I have another, uh, and, and it's not pronounced Adil, but... But anyway, um, our, our Pakistan Urdu channel uh, is just been announced and released. So if you are uh, from the Urdu committee, uh, part of the world, that is, uh, check out that channel. Hit the subscribe button. We, we're going to have a bunch of videos, live Q&As, uh, especially going to help out our friends over in Pakistan. And for the first time ever, we have 100 viewers on this channel concurrently. That's never happened before. Super excited to break another barrier. Thank you for being a participant in our channel today. Uh, if you liked our show today, please add a comment and say what you learned. I love it when people share what they learned and what they liked. It helps me know what other content to make. Reasons for not getting impressions through PPC. Number one, banned ad. Number two, bid not high enough. Number three, campaign budget has been hit or collapsed. There are many other reasons. Um, suppressions could be another reason. Check out those uh, first, though, and, and report back. Geraldine, that would be another good infographic to make. Steven says, is there any benefit to adding alt text to secondary product images? Um, you can't. You can only add it to the A-plus content. You can title the image as you load it. We don't know if that is helpful or not, but I definitely would do it if you got the time. And finally, our last question today Koki says, hi, Mag, have you ever tested as seen in news publication logo images on listings or A-plus content? Any noticeable conversion rate increases? Um, the as seen on TV stuff absolutely works. Uh, but in terms of as seen on like other things, it depends on the value of that source, right? So if it's a really big source that could do really well, um, they got a big name behind them, 100% would do it. If it's kind of a no brain, like a no name thing, um, and it's just, you know, some guy said something, not probably going to move the needle much. That is our show today. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Let us know what you liked in the comments. We're here every Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. I'll be down at Pow Wow next week. You can meet me down in Florida and shake my hand if you like. We'll see you guys next week.